Every cause has its effect. Every effect has its cause. Everything happens according to law. Chance is but a name for law not recognized. There are many planes of causation, but nothing escapes the law. The Kybalion. Cause and effect reside merely in events. An event or occurrence is what comes, arrives or happens as a consequence or result of a previous event. No event is isolated, but is a link in the great coordinated chain of events flowing from the creating energy of the whole. The law of cause and effect, one of the seven hermetic principles outlined by Hermes Trismegistus in the Kybalion, underlies this endless chain of events. The universe is woven with infinite threads of causality, and none of us can escape its powerful influence. Everything we experience in the present has its roots in some past moment, whether we were aware of it or not, whether in this life or in another. When we attribute something to mere chance, we are simply acknowledging our ignorance of a law that governs our destiny. In reality, that event was destined to occur as a result of our own actions and decisions, conscious or unconscious. It is comforting to think that our victories are the result of our actions, but it is more difficult for us to accept that we have also sown the seeds of the adversities we face. We struggle to understand when and how we have woven the negative. However, this principle offers us the key by revealing that the causes of our experiences are diverse, some rooted in the past and buried deep in our memory. These events may have been triggered in our childhood or even in past lives. Additionally, we inherit genetic influences from our parents, grandparents and great-grandparents, forming an endless chain. We cannot overlook the influence of the society in which we grew up, our religion, the education received, our work environment and the people around us. These are just examples that show the diversity of factors that shape our lives. The planes of causality are formed from the places, people and events that have molded in our minds patterns and beliefs that we consider true. Every student of metaphysics must carefully examine the set of information they have received throughout their conscious life, discerning what they choose to retain in their minds and what needs to be discarded. In this process, it is crucial to identify which thoughts have been transmitted to us by our family or society, and which we have adopted by our own choice. It is also important to remember what we thought in the past and what we have decided to think now. We always have the freedom to choose in the present moment, which is the only moment we really have. We must bear in mind that so-called free will is nothing more than the opportunity given to us to select our thoughts. In this capacity lies our true power, and so we take control of our lives. In this process of mental selection, it is crucial to be responsible and avoid falling into the trap of blaming others or external circumstances for our unhappiness. So, many avoid taking responsibility for the fact that a part of themselves generates unhappiness and misery, thus postponing the possibility of transformation and growth. Some blame the government, the economy, their partner, their family, their children, their bosses, and even the weather, humidity, heat, or cold for their dissatisfaction. As the principle of correspondence teaches us, everything that happens on the outside reflects our inner state. When something external causes us discontent or suffering, it is simply reminding us that there is an internal wound that we need to heal, otherwise it would not affect us. It is highly recommended to investigate the origin of current situations. For example, if we find ourselves in a period of loneliness, it is not simply due to bad luck or the lack of finding the right person for us. That loneliness holds a meaning in our life. It is a lesson we must learn. The most direct way to find answers to the conflicts we face 
is to ask our higher self or inner God, preferably in a state of meditation. The answers we receive are often clear and concrete, often summarized in a few words or a sensation. If we cultivate the practice of prayer and supplication, let us remember that this is only part of the dialogue with the Divine. While we pray, we are talking to God, but when we meditate, we listen to His response. The key is to remain silent for a few moments after praying and pay attention to what we receive internally. When our higher self responds to our concerns and not our ego, the unmistakable signal is the peace that invades us. The vicissitudes that seem to overshadow our daily life originate from this principle of cause and effect. Throughout countless reincarnations, we have sown seeds that today germinate as our present reality. There are those who in past lives sowed generosity and now reap the fortune of their nobility, being perceived as fortunate. On the contrary, others have transgressed universal laws and find themselves entangled in problems and adversities. In this way, some are born in opulence and health, while others face adversity from birth. However, Beyond the appearance or situation that we have to live, we all incarnate on this planet with the opportunity to heal ourselves and evolve in consciousness. Therefore, obstacles vanish when we have fully assimilated the lesson they provide. So, we understand that every challenge we go through is an opportunity to expand our consciousness towards new horizons of understanding. In the Buddhist and Hindu tradition, this principle of correspondence is known as karma. Karma represents the debt we acquire with our destiny, while Dharma rewards us for our past good actions. Every act of kindness we offer to others comes back to us multiplied at some point, just as any harm we cause sooner or later reaches us in the form of adversity. This truth is reflected in the ancient law of Talion described in the Bible. Eye for eye, tooth for tooth. Often misunderstood as a rule of revenge, when in reality it is the expression of the law of cause and effect. We reap what we sow. The chain of karma can extend eternally. A person can be a victim in one life and become a perpetrator in the next, only to become a victim again and so on. This succession of events is only broken when one of the parties involved decides to grant forgiveness. It is through the authentic practice of forgiveness that bad karma dissipates completely. However, achieving genuine forgiveness is not an easy task. Many people who claim to have forgiven actually only undergo an intellectual exercise. When faced again with the forgiven person, resentments and reproaches resurface immediately, evidencing that forgiveness, indeed, has not taken place. True absolution brings peace. Most people who resist forgiveness are driven by the desire for someone to pay for the harm they have inflicted upon them. They harbor a thirst for justice that apparently finds no satisfaction in this earthly plane. However, every student of metaphysics must understand that divine justice operates through the law of cause and effect. Therefore, it is essential that we be aware of our actions, as every thought or act we undertake is a seed that will inevitably bear fruit. The law of cause and effect operates incessantly, manifesting what we have generated in some form. Therefore, by performing good deeds, we will harvest kindness at some point, although it may not come from the same people we have benefited. This principle of cause and effect is constantly in motion, and no one can escape its influence. Ultimately, we will have to settle the debts we have incurred or receive with gratitude the benefits of having acted correctly at the time. The process of settling our karmic debts is accelerated in this new era. What previously required multiple reincarnations to understand and redeem now happens in this very life. 
If I harm someone today, it is likely that I will have to face the consequences in the near future, not in some next life or in the next ten. This advancement in human consciousness promises an increase in the level of understanding throughout humanity. However, this process of transformation, which has already begun, will still need many years to be completed fully. In the process of this evolution, we will realize our intrinsic unity that we are all part of one being. In other words, we are all children of God and part of one entity. Therefore, it is crucial that we help each other and practice forgiveness. We must adapt to these cosmic changes to foster love and contribute to the awakening of consciousness on our planet. A true metaphysician uses their knowledge for their own growth and to serve others. But where does karma come from? To answer this question, we must go back to the beginnings of humanity. Human beings were created in the image and likeness of God, but since they obtained their creative power, they conceived an entity apparently separate from their creator, the ego. Our ego makes us believe that we are separate from the rest, that we have a unique identity and an exclusive social and family position, among other things. It leads us to feel special and unique and does everything possible to prove it. On the other hand, our spirit tells us that we are all one, that separation is only an illusion. The sensation of separation makes us feel guilty and that guilt seeks punishment. Every time we blame ourselves for something, our mind creates the corresponding punishment, whether it be loneliness, financial problems, illnesses, family or relationship conflicts, among others. But the guilt does not stay only in us. Often, our ego projects it outward, blaming others for our unhappiness. By projecting blame outward, we move further away from solving the problem, which only reinforces the dominance of our ego. Those who blame others the most are the ones who grow the least spiritually. And when the ego cannot find external culprits, it directs the blame towards ourselves, generating immobility and frustration. This is common in perfectionistic or highly structured individuals. To resolve this conflict, it is crucial to understand that we all make mistakes in our learning journey, which can be corrected without needing to be condemned for them. Forgiveness should not be limited to others. We also need to forgive ourselves. According to the principle of cause and effect, everything we experience is the result of our own actions. We possess creative power, and sometimes due to improper use of it, we create difficult or painful situations. This is how we build our own personal drama. According to metaphysics, each individual's drama originates in the idea of separation from our source. We can compare this effect of separation to the concept of original sin in the Bible, symbolized by Adam and Eve's expulsion from paradise. The feeling of disconnection from our genuine essence is what engenders all fears, anxieties, and great dilemmas. A clear example of this is loneliness, an affliction that is not simply resolved by having someone by our side. In many cases, one can feel deeply lonely even in company because the true root of loneliness lies in the feeling of being disconnected from our creative source. Only by repairing this connection can we experience fullness, completeness and happiness. It is intriguing to note that many religious institutions foster the idea of separation instead of unity, as they rely on the laws of the ego rather than those of the spirit. The process to free ourselves from karma begins by recognizing the projection we make onto others, understanding that there are no culprits outside of us, but rather, in some way, we are projecting our problems outward. Then, we must admit that we ourselves are not guilty, but rather, 
we have simply made mistakes due to situations we did not know how to handle otherwise. Instead of lamenting and judging ourselves for past mistakes, we must learn from them and know that ultimately we are traversing our own path of personal and experiential evolution. Beyond our ego lies our higher self, also known as the Holy Spirit. Every student of metaphysics must learn to invoke the guidance of their higher self, especially in moments of conflict, to understand what they are experiencing and make higher decisions. To progress on our evolutionary path, it is crucial to dismantle our personal drama. When we find ourselves caught in constant internal conflict, all we achieve is drawing attention from others and absorbing their energy. The more drama we experience, the more we deplete others' energy. However, upon awakening to spiritual life, we discover that the source of our energy resides elsewhere, an infinite and inexhaustible source. Therefore, we do not need to usurp others' energy. Let us always remember that we are the protagonists of our own story. In every moment, in every act, we sow the seeds of our future and we reap the fruits of our past. May this understanding inspire us to live fully and consciously, honoring the power of our free will to transform our lives and the world around us.